in his cadence, uh, apparently, in 2023. Yes! Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Normally, it's like red 18, green 19, like you hear about this. And then Russell Wilson has this cadence that I heard, and it kind of infiltrated. I think I was listening in my car as we were driving home from Lucas Oil Stadium, and it sounded like it was 1910 with mm -hmm. football. This is what he said. Sweet. Hey, 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 Hut two, hut three. Hut three. I never even, I didn't even know that existed. So, uh, like, you're a person to ask who, because obviously the hard count and the cadence is something that you're, like, world-renowned for at this at this point. Why is the here we go entering my life, and how did this not happen beforehand? And what is, like, the evolution of cadences that we've got to this point where there's so many different ones, seemingly, at the same time? Well, I think that's a great question. I mean, just... First, I want to talk about Dak because um, he's become one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch. Uh, I've watched more football this year than any other year because in normal years, you just, you're just getting ready for games, so you're never watching football, right? And you might see some scores on your phone and maybe every now and then you know see a Sunday night game uh, and you might get Monday, part of Monday or Thursday. But you're, not, you're just not, not watching a lot of games. And this year, I watch a lot more games than usual. And... You know, Tom had some comments about, Brady had some comments about some of the mediocrity in the game. And I just want to say Dak is not who he was talking about okay. um, for a number of reasons. But I just love that it, he's really playing the position. What I mean by that is I'm watching him make Ringo calls. So that's protection adjustments against these crazy looks and picking things up. I'm watching him. Uh, you know, bring the tight end back in against the zero pressure and throw an old concept we used to run for a touchdown to CeeDee Lamb in the back end zone. I'm watching him use his cadence uh, beautifully and and uh, and get into this rhythmic here we go into like uh, dummy, using it as a dummy sometimes, doing it twice, into like other cadences. I mean, I've, the last four or five weeks I've gotten to see more of their games and – I just want to say, like, he's playing a position in a really impressive way. And for whatever reason, maybe because he's the Cowboys quarterback and it's one of those premier positions in sports, um, like I feel like the Green Bay quarterback has been for a long time and some other, you know, positions in, in various sports, he might take a little more shit than, than he deserves or, or maybe it's deserving of the position, I guess. But I love the way he's playing, and I love the way he's playing, like really playing. I'm not talking about just like, oh, making good throws. I'm talking about like it seems more rare that guys are actually really playing a position where you're making adjustments, you're handling everything in line of scrimmage. Now you're doing this crazy cadence stuff. Like I love it, and I just want to shout out Dak for like really impressing me. Um, that multiple, baby Dak. Multiple yeah. times. Dak. Hey, man, Dak, he doesn't hear that a lot. No, he doesn't. Doesn't hear, get to hear that a lot. Uh -uh. Way to go, Dak. Here we go. <laughs> but that, but the, the evolution of the, of the, you know, of the cadence from my perspective, you know, Brett obviously uh, came up with a rhythmic cadence that has a snap point a little bit different than maybe we grew up where it was like down, set, hike, or go, you know, and he snapped the ball on the hike or the go. Um, this this became a snap point at different times, whether it's second number or second color, and created this rhythmic type of cadence that you also were able to adjust to draw people off sides. Then there was the fad with the Omaha stuff that, that I think Peyton was doing, um, which was really just a way to do all his crazy stuff he was doing at the line of scrimmage. People were like, what does Omaha mean? Omaha meant, hey, mother... We got two seconds on the play clock, and I need this shit snapped quickly. So I'm just going to say, oh, my God. Yeah. Right? It was just it was a rhythmic thing to get us uh, in and out of uh, of a cadence late on the play clock so we could do everything else in the line of scrimmage, his real calls, his dummy calls, his adjustments. Um, and then, obviously, when you have that, then you can change. Then you can go, hey, second Omaha here, or have some code words that mean – no snap and different things. We obviously use the cadence uh, for years in Green Bay to uh, as as a weapon. Uh, and I always said it doesn't even matter if we draw them off sides because if they're thinking about it and they're watching the TV copy and they're studying it, they're, they're going to be a little bit slower off because they just don't want to jump off sides. 
Um, and then obviously we used you know 12 on the field for a long time as well where we're taking shots. But if you look at the, the interesting evolution is that uh, th not every team still is willing to snap it and take a shot. I mean, for a long time I felt like, uh, you know, Cincinnati, I remember, would snap it and take a knee, which I always thought was wild. Uh, Indy, I think for the most part, would try and just tap the guy. So a guy comes upside, tap him. Well, I always said, man, snap that, snap that thing. Let's take a shot. You know, like I don't care, like if you block anybody, just snap that. And then that, and then the, then what you saw as well, coming out of a 2015 game, with some complaints by a certain coach, uh, now they they started whistling things very quickly. If a lineman moves slightly uh, before the snap, that they would blow the play dead. Uh, it really had to be guys off size. Line does not move at all. Will allow the play to happen. And then the other adjustment was which didn't happen, I remember a play specifically from 2009 against Detroit where Vandenbosch was like way off sides and I like did some pirouette spin around and hit Donald Driver for about 50 yards. Um, that play wouldn't have, wouldn't exist in today's game because there's uh, unabated to the quarterback, which means that the defensive player is in a compromising position for the for the uh, offense and really for the quarterback based on his jump. Um, uh, so now it's, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, to get people, but we got people three times in the game uh, on Friday. Timmy did a great job with the uh, with the cadence. Unfortunately, the downside of it is you can't have your own guys jump offsides. You know, you can't have a false start. So we had, I think, three uh, offsides and two false starts and a holding, which negated the other one. So overall, it's kind of a wash. That uh, that needs to be a little bit of a bigger bigger weapon when we use it. And that's why I think some teams don't want to use it. But I love what da what Dak did. That was beautiful. I'm laughing at Russ. I think looking at the score in that, it looked like it was 24-12 or 27-12 at that point. So I don't know if he's messing around because sometimes in practice I'll do stuff like that where I'll change the cadence and just say hut one, hut two, whatever. The fact that they snapped that on hut three is pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but if you have a rhythmic cadence, you can get guys. It's 24-12, yeah. If you have a rhythmic cadence, you can get guys to jump off sides and uh, – they can really be a weapon because at bare minimum they're thinking about it. And if they're thinking about it, they're not going to quite get off on the snap. What is it normally? Uh, it's normal uh, number color, right? Number color. And then you bounce it back. How did we get to, here we go. And are we just looking for any three syllable? Like what is the, how do, how do you think Dak ended up with here we go? I think you should ask Dak. I don't know. I don't want to speak for him. I love it though, because it's loud. Everybody can hear it. And if you watch the, and I was watching the synchronization of the plays, right? He started with here we go, set hut. And he did that, I don't know, three, four, five times, and then came back, and it was a no play. And he go, here we go, set hut, and they jumped, and they got a freebie, right? And then they came back and did a couple of them. Uh, so I love the sequence in it, and, that, and that's the beauty of, of a guy really playing a position. And there's a lot of great quarterbacks. There's only a few guys that, are, that really play the position um, meaning they do all the little things, and, and Dak's doing it, and he's having a hell of a season, and it's been it's been fun to watch uh, this year. Yeah, it's like old school feel, and you talk about chatting with. Thank you for the explanation of all that, by the way.